the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. كل سنة وانتو طيبين for the beginning of the month of Kiyak, the blessed month that uh, we enjoy the praising and glorification for uh, St. Mary and uh, getting prepared for the Nativity Feast. Today is the very first week of the month of Kiyak, first Sunday, and uh, all the readings of the Gospels, of the liturgies for the month of Kiyak are taken from the first chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. Today we read the first part, which is from uh, verse 1 to verse 25, which is the Annunciation of Zachar uh, Archangel Gabriel to Zechariah. Next week will be the Annunciation of Archangel Gabriel to Saint Mary. The following week, the third week, will be the visit of Saint Mary to uh, Elizabeth to help her in her old age pregnancy. And the fourth and last week of Kiyak will be the birth of Saint John the Baptist, and then the following week will be the Nativity Feast. So, going back to the Sunday readings about the Annunciation of Archangel Gabriel to Zechariah about the birth of St. John the Baptist, we understand that this is a major stop in God's plan for salvation. And it is important like, to have this stop coming be immediately before, we're talking about like this chapter covers about nine months from the Annunciation of Archangel Gab Gabriel to Zacharias to the birth of our uh, Saint John the Baptist. And this is the transitional five, nine months between the Old and New Testament. It is a very major stop in the salvation plan and we understand that it is an important uh, step because Actually, this is the first time for over 400 years that God sent a message to his people. There was, before that, there was, since uh, Prophet Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, there was no prophets in this area. Like, and this is the first time that God sent a messenger with a message that's related to the salvation. And that's why when Zechariah uh, saw this uh, at the birth of St. John the Baptist, he said that God visited his people. Finally, God visited his people. And we also understand that the importance of who is this person that Archangel Gabriel gave the Annunciation about. This is like the, which the, the Lord said, Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there, was, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. So we understand all this, how great this event is. And this is actually what Malachi prophesied. The last book of the Old Testament prophesied about this, talking about him that he is, behold, I send my messenger that he will prepare the way before me. And this is what the archangel Gabriel told Zacharias. But today I really want to talk about something more simple than all that. It's a great event, it's a great uh, step, but let's talk a little bit about simpler things. When the Holy Scripture introduced today in this Gospel, Zacharias and his wife Elizabeth, he introduced them as they were both righteous before God, righteous before God, walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Those, like, this is how the scriptures introduced Zacharias and Elizabeth. Righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances, and blameless. Zacharias, all his life, was praying for a child. 
And that's what appeared when Archangel Gabriel came and he told him that your prayer was heard. He was praying for a child like any Jewish family. They were hoping that the Messiah would come from this family. That was like, and when they, they believed back then, when God doesn't allow any family to have a child, it's a sign of reproach. And they, might, they believe that God is punishing this family or is angry for a reason or another from them, which is not true. Exactly, this is the same exact wrong belief with anyone born with any kind of disability or infirmity. Remember this born blind man when the people saw him and presented him to God and they asked him, who had sinned, this guy or his parents, that he was born blind? But the Lord's answer so this question is the key for what we want to talk about today. It's not, he said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. That's the answer and this is what we want to talk about, why God may delay an answer for a prayer why God may work with people in a very advanced, late stage of their life. That the works of God should be revealed in him. God is working in our lives in different ways. And he's working with every single person differently. There are people who, that God starts working with them early, the, let's agree first that what do we mean God works in our lives? The purpose or the main goal, the ultimate goal for our God is our salvation. And at the end of our life, no matter how long, how short it is, that we reach eternal life. To be part of his kingdom. That this, this is his ultimate goal. So when we say God is working with someone or in someone's life, that means that he's working for this person's salvation. And for this person, at the end of his, her life, to reach eternal life and enjoy and be part of the kingdom. So God is working differently with every single person. He's working differently based on the mission or the responsibility this person is entitled for. There are some people God is entrusting them about a certain service or a mission in their life, maybe like to serve a congregation, as big as a congregation, or uh, a diocese, or maybe as small as a household and maybe even smaller, just work on myself. So, so work is, God's work is different from one another based on the mission and the responsibility. It's also different from the personality and the person's character. We're not all alike. We are different, every single, and God is giving us like different personalities, so, and this kind of personality or, or this kind of character God is giving us is, gonna, is for the purpose and the work God will give us and entrusting us to do. God is also working with every single person of us based on the cap our capabilities and the talents he gave us. Someone can get one talent, two, five. So God is giving talents to everyone. No one is without talents, no one. God is giving us abundantly. And as much as we trade with our talents, God will bless and give more. Back to Zechariah. Archangel Gabriel told him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will appear, will bear your, you a son. 
I see Zacharias is an example of for us in our frustration when we pray and we don't hear any response or any answer. Maybe it's lack of faith, maybe it's lack of hope, but like I, I can imagine Zacharias talking, standing before the angel and ask, my prayer are heard. Now, in that age, Elizabeth, all this came into his mind. Like, I, I still can imagine Zacharias thinking, I recall all these years of struggles and tears that you give me a son or a child. I recall nights of long prayers. I recall bowing down on my knees for hours. Now you're coming to tell me my prayers are heard? Yes. God always answered the prayers. But it's not like a button click. It's not. We pray, click the button, the prayer is answered. God is answering the prayer in the perfect timing. I don't know how long it took Zacharias to pray. 20, 30, 40, I don't know, maybe more than that. But God answered it, and he answered it in a perfect timing, not just for Zacharias, but for all mankind. God's answer to Zacharias' prayer was a benefit for all mankind, not just Zacharias and his family. So if we apply this to our lives, I don't feel it is right sometimes that we can stand before God and start blaming him that he's not listening or he is not understanding our need or he does not. Uh, we are just praying without results. How many years I have been praying for this? How many years have I been seeing families struggling for any reason? How many years I've been struggling with my own family, with my own kids, with my service, with my work? And I pray, I pray, I pray, and it seems to me that there's no answer. It seems to me that, God, you're not listening. If someone is sick, if someone is in trouble, if someone that is not in peace with himself or is not in peace with God, people went astray, People are affected with what's going on these days, with false teachings, with completely wrong ideas in life. Our enemies filling the world with injustice and false teachings, with weird ideas. Where are you, God? Till when? Till when we'll keep praying and we don't see anything working right. When will you answer this prayer? Remember, Zechariah, pretty much he lost hope about all, the, all his prayers. He gave it up. He gave up. Yeah, it makes sense. If God doesn't want to give us a child, it, okay, it's, thy will be done. There's no child. The idea is that God's timing is different than ours. And sometimes with our like uh, narrow vision, we might not really understand what's going on according to his divine plan. Like I said earlier, God's, God's plan was for Zacharias to have a child was not just for Zacharias family, it was for the whole entire world. God, work perfectly in, God works perfectly in our weaknesses. It's not when Zacharias was a young priest full of energy and power. No, these things doesn't really bother God because he's the one who's doing the work. 
like uh, in uh, the second Corinthians, St. Paul is saying when he was asking for some strength, God told him, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. When you are weak, my strength will be revealed more in your life. So, so when St. Paul underst understood this, he said, therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. There is another example of the Bible that immediately Zacharias, when he heard the news from St. Archangel Gabriel, he, sh Gabriel sh he should have recalled this example right away, which is Abraham and Sarah. God called Abraham to go out of his town and from his land at the age of 75. And when Isaac was born, how old was Abraham? And the promise for God that I'm going to make your children as numerous as the sand on the seashore and the stars in the sky. And for how many years? Abraham didn't even have one child, but he had the promise. And that's why, because he believed, it was counted righteous for him. It was, he was called a righteous man, or it was counted for him righteousness. Because he believed even if he cannot see it. A year, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, at the age of 100, Isaac was born. So, the second point here is gonna be the faith that God is working. He's doing a lot in the background and behind the scene. And we can, See now, where is Father Abraham in heaven? Like the, the Lord Jesus himself, when he gave an, a parable about how the heaven looked like, he said, the heaven is in the bosom of Father Abraham. Another example from the Bible, in Psalm 90, Psalm 90 is the only psalm that Moses the prophet wrote. And he was talking about he say, he's saying, the days of our lives are 70 years. And he, probably he's talking about like, he feels that he's aging, he's uh, getting weaker every day. An unknown shepherd, a wanted criminal. The days of our life are 70 years, and by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Well, if God just gave you some extra strength from, as a blessing, they are 80 years. Yet their, their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. So Moses wrote that he believes that our lives should be within 70, 80 years. It's good enough. And then... We join the Lord after that. But at that age of 80, God met Moses at the burning bush, asking him, asking him to start working with him and to deliver my children, Israel, from the hands of the Egyptian and to go to the promised land. Can you believe it? At the age of 80? Where were you 40 years ago when I was the prince of Egypt? I had communication, I had power, I had, I had everything. Where were you? Now when I am an unknown shepherd, so weak, getting ready to join my fathers, you're asking me to start working with you? So, I, to summarize all this, God's work doesn't have time. It's a continuous plan. He might be working now, but not, we cannot see the work he's doing behind the scene. But he's preparing something. 
is cooking something. And again, the ultimate goal is eternal life. Three things that we, or three lessons we take out of today's gospel. Prayers are answered. Number one, prayers are answered. No matter how long it takes, prayers are answered. In God's perfect timing, they are answered no matter how long it takes. Number two, we do not, we do not lose hope. Losing the hope, Zechariah lost hope already, but no, we shouldn't lose hope. And as long as we pray, God is going to work. And number three, we have faith. Whatever the answer of, to our prayers will be, it will be for our benefit. By the way, we might be praying for something, but God answers in a completely different way. But this doesn't mean that he didn't answer. No, he answered it for our benefit. The way he sees right, the way he sees perfect for our salvation. Many years down the road from now, may God give you all long, healthy life. We can look back, or maybe in eternity, when we reach our final destination, we look back and we're going to see that God worked everything perfect in its due time, in its perfect time. We will definitely understand many hidden mysteries back up there and maybe down the road. And then we will thank him and glorify him because of what he had done in our life so we can reach eternal life and join him. And glory be to God forever. Amen.